You know, a short history of some of the books that you've been uh, turning out over the past few years include uh, Constitutional Chaos. Then you have titles like To a Nation of Sheep, or rather, A Nation of Sheep to Dred Scott's Revenge. To your current book, It is Dangerous to be Right When Your Government is Don't Wrong. Don't forget the Constitution in Exile. Oh, no, I know that as, where well it is as, today. as well as Dred Scott's Revenge. But I mean, I sense in the arc of your titles more militancy. Um, do you feel that we're on a downward path uh, irrevocably or irrevocably towards a loss of freedom and liberty? I think we're on a downward path. I don't think it's irrevocable. And I have to give full credit for the title of this book to Voltaire, who actually mm -hmm. suggested it to me one day. Right. Of course, it's 250 years old and a famous phrase from him, it is dangerous to be right, right. when the government is wrong. Look, in one respect, women have uh, full rights and African Americans have full rights. It shouldn't be something we are happy about, but when you consider the historic treatment of African Americans and women, it's about time they have those rights. And as much as I love Jefferson, mm -hmm. they didn't have them in that era. In, in that respect, we are a broader, more expansive, uh, freer society. But with respect to the level of regulation by the government, the areas of human behavior utterly and totally dominated by the federal government, much less a, a, a state government, um, the surveillance state, the welfare state, the warfare state, the regulatory state, the administrative state, we are on a downward spiral and we are losing liberty with every tick of the clock and unless we get a game changer in the White House and the Congress or on the courts, the spiral will continue. One of the, your chapters has to do with the right to own property. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, if we go back to the Kelo decision, which was what, 2005? Right. Uh, you know, that, that was horrible, the Kelo decision, which basically the Supreme Court said, yeah, a state jurisdiction or a, a, you know, a, a state political body can take whatever they want uh, from a private property owner immediately to turn it over to another private property owner as eminent domain abuse you know, defined. But that also sparked a counter uh, force against eminent domain abuse. So are we fighting the good fight or, or, you know, in, in these cases? We are fighting the good fight. In fact, just three days ago, the good people of the state of Mississippi amended the state's constitution to prohibit any state government in Mississippi uh, from doing what the Supreme Court authorized uh, in Kelo. And of course the case, the Kelo case only got to the Supreme Court because the state of Connecticut did not have uh, such a prohibition. Uh, but as much as I love the Fifth Amendment, uh, which requires that if the government wants life, liberty, or property, it has to engage in due process, which prohibits torture and compelled testimony against oneself. It is the linchpin of big government. Here's why. Jefferson argued, and I believe, that the only moral, valid, lawful exchange of property is one that is truly voluntary. Hamilton wanted at the Constitutional Convention the same powers that the king did, which is the power to take any property and the king would decide whether or not he owed you anything. They compromised with the Fifth Amendment, which is the government can take what it wants, but it's got to pay you a fair value for it and the government has to use it for a public use. Jefferson warned that the public use would be whatever the government wanted its friends to have and that's where we are. And it's because Jefferson's warnings were disregarded that the government can now take anything.